Oh, oh, it's magic, you know. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Hi, internet people. So, it feels like it has been forever and a day since I filmed a video for my channel. I don't know why I'm on the same schedule as normal, but it just feels like it has been forever. So we are back with a Fangirl Freakouts video, and today's video is all about the show The Magicians, which I was woefully, like, not watching season one of. Okay, so The Magicians was on, like, last year? I didn't watch any of season one, but it recently dropped on Netflix. And, like with Supergirl, I literally bought The Magicians on DVD in the summer, like, June or something, so I could watch it. I was super excited. Totally didn't wind up watching it until it hit Netflix. I still watch the DVDs because I bought them. A uh, fun little factoid. There's a gag reel on the DVDs that is not on Netflix, which is really funny, so that was a bonus. Um, but I finally watched season one of The Magicians, and it is so good. Like, I haven't read the book. I have no idea how close the book and the show are, but ooh, the show is so good. Uh, okay. I was trying to explain it to someone because a lot of people are like, it's like grown up Harry Potter. And it's not exactly it for me. Like, it kind of feels like if you took Harry Potter, like the later books of Harry Potter, and Narnia, and then like filmed it using Hannibal Vision. So, okay. In this series, there is a magic school, and when you're in like your mid 20s, so like grad school, because it's, it's sort of like a grad school, not an actual school. Like, grad school is actual school. I went to grad school. I know what I'm talking about. No, not really. No, don't, don't listen to me. I did go to grad school. Not that it's the same as magic school. It really, really isn't. Um, so, in, uh, in The Magicians, you get selected by break bills through this, like, random process. Like, they find people with magical power or, like, magical connection, and they magically pull you at, like into the school, you take a test, if you pass the test, you get to join the school. If you don't, you get your memory wiped, you're supposed to forget about it altogether. Um, Quentin and Julia are friends, and Quentin has issues with mental illness. Um, he has, I, I'm gonna call it depression, I'm not sure if that's exactly it. Um, some of his symptoms sound like depression, and I, I know he gets diagnosed or mentions a diagnosis in some way, um, but he has problems connecting with the world and then Julia um when they were kids used to be obsessed with this series called Fillory and so they've both been obsessed with magic but he Quentin is still like doing card tricks he's still really interested in Fillory even though Julia feels like she's outgrown it they are in their 20s so he's like still like rereading the books looking through the books he says they actually helped him get through a really rough period when he was like 16 um but they're still friends. They both wind up getting pulled into the Breakbills exam, but Quentin gets in, Julia does not. So they're like diverging plots where we get to see what Quentin is doing at Break Breakbells. Breakbells. Yeah, whatever. I'm I'm saying it weird and I feel like I'm saying it wrong, but I don't care. Um uh, <laughs> I it's whatever. So they're in like diverging paths. So Julia isn't there, but she still is like desperate to know about magic and she managed to not get memory wiped. And so we're seeing like hedge witches and all of his outside magic that's not like official. And then we see like official trained magic with Quentin and we meet really cool characters. Um, Alice, who's really, really smart, who is from a family who has gone there before. Um, I literally love Alice so much, like so much. I don't even know why, like she's super cute and amazing. And just Alice is great all the time, forever Alice, just Alice. Um, <laughs> but there's also Katie, who has an interesting plot that weaves into Julia's plot, but I don't want to say too much because we'll give things away. Um, Penny, who is a psychic, uh, he's super cool. He also makes fun of Quentin all the time. Then Margot and Elliot, um, who are upper years, they're third years, I think, and Elliot, I just, I wish I could act like Elliot. Like, he is this sort of over-the-top character. He and Margot are both pretty over-the-top. They're big partiers. Um, they're good at physical magic, um, which is the house of Quentin and Alice are also in. You get divided into houses, but it's more based on your, like, magical ability as opposed to your character. Um, so that's fun and cool, which is part of the Harry Potter aspect. Um, but 
a lot happens in the series where Julia is experiencing this like these people who want to know magic but can't get it officially so it gets like hedge they're hedge witches you learn more about them um but there's a lot going on in that world like it's a lot darker um actually in the show itself Julia's world is filmed through like a blue tone so like her scenes are like grays blues darker colors and then like over at the school everything is like brighter and lighter even though very dark things are happening because there's this beast he's literally called the beast um who is apparently trying to kill them um he's really creepy and made of moths um so yeah i mean that that also makes me think of Hannibal because sentence of the lens is the moths thing anyway um there's this beast that wants to kill them they're not really sure why but he's coming after them and uh, it's just so good i don't want to say too much there's a lot of like questy stuff that happens near the end um but they're like learning magic and trying to figure out how to defeat the beast but there's also a lot more like relationship stuff happening and it's just there are a lot of the people at the school dealing with relationships julia dealing with the fact that magic is addicting and finding ways to get more of it um and then her and Quentin's relationship and all of these relationships that are sort of happening and breaking and being damaged by magic or being helped initially by magic um there's a lot of sex lots and lots of sex there's a threesome at one point there's a lot of sex there's fox sex uh yeah yeah fox sex it's just a lot there's a lot of sex a lot of partying um Elliot winds up dealing with a lot of really intense stuff at one point um there's a lot of death like lots of not good things. Alice is dealing with um, a connection to a family member for her. I don't want to say too much because I will reveal things. That's a problem when I talk about whole TV shows because I don't want to reveal too much. Um, but some interesting things that happen. There's time magic. Gods show up. A mystical world gets to be revealed. Um, the Fillory books become really important. Um, what else happens? Um, I feel like there's something I am oh yes um in this series final episode I was completely fine with all the things that were happening before final episode in the final episode there is a very graphic assault scene that I was not okay with I did not want it to happen and then I was like this is so I was I was irritated like be, like I was watching it and I actually got mad like I was like why why did this have to happen like why why is this here then, then they make the scene important because somehow in this series, this only affects the final episode, it's not even technically a spoiler, but okay, semen is magic! Yeah, that's a thing. So the assault scene becomes important because literally, semen is magic! I'm not even gonna, it happens. Like, I don't, I don't know. That's the weirdest thing to me in this plot. Just that. It just... I literally kept thinking all last night, I was like, semen is magic. Just over and over again. And I was like, this is ridiculous. It's a good, like, I like the show. I do not like that assault scene at all. And then it, like, gets made important to the plot. And then I was like, I still don't like it. Like, I don't like it. I understand why it's there based on the whole semen is magic point. But I, I um, was not okay with it still not okay with it I'm still not okay I also have no clue how season two even happens because it starts the 25th and the end of season one which I I don't know I have no idea I literally was like how what how so it's really really good though like the writing is good it's funny but also dark there's a lot like it's a well-written show the acting is really good like everyone is doing a good job I like the characters I like everything that's happening except that assault scene like really not okay really not okay um but I really like the show overall um so I really like it I'm definitely going to watch season two like on television like live I have an alarm thing set on my phone so that I will make sure that I actually watch the premiere of season two so I'm super pumped um I need to read the book or I might read the book if you've read the book could you tell me like if it's close or not to the tv show I'm just curious in general um uh, but I definitely want to watch season two possibly going to read the book it's up in the air on the book front uh because I don't want to like get spoiled for season two if like stuff in the book is ha yeah sometimes sometimes I don't want to know um okay 
So there is that. If you are watching The Magicians or considering watching The Magicians, um, let me know what you think, what you're feeling, stuff like that in the comments or on Twitter. I am at Clef Notes. Uh, but yeah, you can check it out on Netflix. Um, and then you could also buy the DVDs. The DVDs have some bonus stuff besides the gag reel. The gag reel is super funny though. Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm excited for season two. Um, and then I intentionally wore a Harry Potter shirt, but you, I don't, yeah. It, it's only really Harry Potter if you're standing behind me or can see the, the pocket on my boob. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I might be throwing in some extra videos at some point. I'm hoping to do some unboxings soon. Fingers crossed. I'm waiting for things to arrive in the mail. Um, but yes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, I already said, at Clefnotes, on my blog, clefnotes.wordpress.com, or for the Nerdy Girl Express, the Nerdy Girl Express.com, or on their Snapchat, the Nerdy Girl EXP, and I post recipes on the iZombiesport Group site, iZombiesport Group.com. Bye, internet people!